150 pound final Carlos Levexier and Kip Kristoff. Let's pick up the action in period two. Kristoff leading 2 1. Levexier was saying that nobody's on scholarship at San Francisco State. You got to work, you got to study, and you got to wrestle. I love amateur athletics. That's what it's all about. Well, as we said at the outset of our broadcast here on ESPN, amateur wrestling, perhaps the oldest form of sport in the world. Some will say running is the oldest form of sport. And Jeff Blatnick has an answer to those who claim that running is the first. Well, I retorted, what were they running from? Wrestlers. So we were around the longest. <laughs> but you saw the XCA grapevine throw that lace leg in on Kip Kristoff as soon as he tried to come up and look for it again. That seems to be his best mat attack. Kristoff's going to have to counter that out to get his escape. He's leading 2-1 to one over Lavexia. We are at 125. And, and here you have it. Kristoff did a very good job of keeping his hips flat to the mat and sliding away from Lavexia, preventing him from grapevining. Slid to the side, hooked his leg, and spun around, got the reversal. It's now 4-1, to one, Kip Kristoff. And Kip immediately working on the arms of Levexier here. Now, as he said, he wanted to wear Levexier down. And it is appearing that he's doing just that here with a minute to go in the period number two. He's showing good poise for being the first time in the finals. Seems confident in what his game plan is, and he's sticking to it. Potential tilt there, almost had him. Again, the criteria for back points is break that 45 degree angle with the shoulders and hold it for a two second count. You earn two back points. Again, if you hold it there five seconds, it's three points. And I believe Levexier is going to start suffering from fatigue here very, very soon. The referee just warned him for stalling, which is a sign of fatigue. Trying to turn him, trying to turn him. Kristoff is relentless with his pressure. And I would not, there's only eight seconds left here, but if it was more time with Kristoff on top, I'd look for almost another stalling call because Levexier has not come off his belly. And Kristoff almost had a pinning combination right there. Now Kristoff up four to one here before the hometown fans with two minutes remaining in this championship match. And Levexier just came off the mat, and I don't know where I've seen his injury. This could be a fatigue break. Taking another look at the reversal, Kip Kristoff, you can see him hook Levexier's legs, slide his hips out and away from him, spin back around, and there's your reversal. And immediately, he's grinding Levexier into the mat, looking for the turn. There's a man who has had terrific coaching virtually all of his amateur career, Jeff. You go back to his high school days in San Francisco at Balboa High School. His coach was a man by the name of Jim Burke, an Olympian back in 1964, along with Bobby Douglas. Ah, yes. Good coaches. Comes with a good line. Taking a look at the score, it's 4-1. to one. And in addition to those four points, Kip Kristoff has 2 minutes and 38 seconds riding time, and he almost assured himself of another point. So it's actually a 5-1 to one score when Levexier looks at that board. He's got to realize that on his comeback. When a wrestler is hurt, the injured wrestler is not allowed to receive coaching. He can receive medical attention, but not coaching. The other wrestler can receive coaching, and the reason is they didn't want anyone taking a break to rest and to get coaching at the same time, so they limit who can get coaching during an injury timeout. Third and final period, Kip Kristoff. Up four to one over Carlos Lovexier. Kristoff in the red. And with Kristoff starting on top, he's adding again to that advantage time, almost guaranteeing himself that one point. He has at this point guaranteed himself one point. That score now reads five to one, even though it only says four to one on the board. A stalemate situation will place Lavexia in the down position as Kristoff settles in on top. And as this match winds down in time, it limits Lavexia to his options. He's going to have to get to his feet and go for a big point throw, and I'm sure Kristoff is aware of that. And it just doesn't look like Kristoff's going to care because he's keeping Levexier down. And oh, he made a big mistake. Two points reversal for Levexier. And that makes the score four to three on the board, but it's actually five to three with the riding time. And Levexier needs a back points in order to win this match. If he can get him there for 
two seconds, he'll tie it. If he can hold him there for three seconds, he'll win it. And this is Levexier's forte. He says he's a mat wrestler. We'll see what he can do here. Kelly is in a poor position here, Jeff, to try and turn Kristoff. Well, I'm sure he's looking for a tilt here to bait Kristoff into a movement where he can just tilt him to his back, knowing he can't pin him there, but just to collect the back points. Time remaining in the match in the upper center of your screen. It's 5-3, Kristoff, the man in red leading. And Levexiez has got his grapevine in there, and he's applying what's known as a power half Nelson, using both arms on the back of the head of Kristoff to try and turn him. Kristoff just won for stalling, makes the score now. Kristoff using a sound defense. He's very aware there's only seven seconds left. You saw him look at his corner with his thumbs up indicating stand up. And Levexier here claiming his knee's hurting. Didn't look like it was hurting while he was on top trying to turn him, but he might be trying to gather himself here for one final burst in this last seven seconds to try to get those back points. Boy, riding time, Jeff, so very, very important. And it was riding time that Kip Kristoff was able to build up in period number one. And that right now is the difference in this match. That is the difference in this match. Thank you. 